everybody, I'm Nick, and in this video I'm going to show you the two brand new types of web application adding .NET 8. Both of those types will be used more and more, and some of them are actually now in the built-in Microsoft API templates. So in this video, I'm going to explain what they are, how they work, how are they different from what we had, and why you really, really need to know about them. If you like our content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe. For more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. I have this .NET 8 API. It doesn't really have anything. It is just an empty Hello World API. And if I go ahead and I quickly run it, as you're going to see in Somni, I'm going to call it. When I call endpoint hello, I get back world. That's about it. Now, this is the default way that was added a few .NET versions ago to create a web application. And in fact, if I change this type, this is a web application builder. And then that builder is what is turned into the web application. Now, the new types added are still a web application builder. So the changes are happening here. In fact, the thing that is changing is this thing, this method over here, the create builder method. Now, there are two new methods added in regards to that in .NET 8. And the first one that you're going to see way, way more now is called create slim builder over here. So not create builder, create slim builder. The return type, it's still the same. It is still a web application builder. But now as the name implies, this is a slimmer version, a thinner version, not as much of a fat or fully featured version. What is ultimately changing is that the create builder method will implicitly add tons of things, including services, middleware, login provider, like tons, tons of things behind the scenes that you might not need in most cases. So that doesn't really matter when you're running your application on a runtime version where you compile to IL code and you run it through the CLR, which is how we normally been publishing .NET projects. But now with native AOT, the problem is that if you add so many services and middleware and stuff that call many, many different things because they need them from the framework, when you compile all that in a native AOT application, you end up with a very big executable because you have many aspects of the framework that you can't just trim out of the application. So what the slim builder is doing is that it's removing tons of things from default registration. Now, if I just go and I run this application, as you're going to see, I still have logging, I still have my services, and when I call this endpoint, I still get world. So not much change. Now, if you go and create a native AOT application using a new template, that's what you're going to use. And here's what is still in this create slim builder method. You still get user credential config. You still get your application settings config. You still get console logging and traditional logging configuration. Most things will work. However, there's a big list of things that no logger is added by default when you create a web application in that way. So what's missing is no support for startup assemblies. So anything implementing I hosting startup, no startup.cs file. Yes, this is not there by default anymore but technically you can add it back if you want. That functionality won't be there. Less login providers, no event log, which is a Windows only thing. No debug provider, no event source. Many web hosting features missing. There's no support for using static web assets method anymore. Crucially, there is no IIS support. So by using the create builder, there will be IIS related hooks that will allow IIS to run the application. That's no longer there if you just use this. So you kind of start to see a thing. Anything Windows specific is sort of removed automatically. There's some missing features in cache configuration. There is also no HTTPS support in this way. You have to explicitly add it. And there's also no HTTP3 support. Again, you have to add it. Another big one that surprised me is that you no longer have regex based matching here. So if you go ahead and you use regex to match your routing, and here's an example for that. Well, something like this won't work because the regex specific provider is no longer there to be able to pass this and handle this. And that's because of how much code regex can generate leading to Microsoft removing support. Again, if you want to add those features back in, for example, HTTPS support or HTTP3 or even regex, you still can do that. The difference is you have to explicitly call them yourself to say, hey, I need this. For example, let's take a look at how we can add HTTPS support, HTTP3 and regex support. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched our second clean architecture course on DomeTrain called Deep Dive Clean Architecture in .NET. And it's again expertly delivered by Microsoft engineer Amikai Mantenban, who also has a YouTube channel, and he's also running clean architecture training for Microsoft employees 
employees within Microsoft. This is a unique opportunity to learn how to build applications using clean architecture by someone who writes code for technologies like Teams, PowerPoint and Word, and his code is used by millions of users every month. Not only did we launch this course, which is a follow up to the getting started we already have, but now both courses are bundled into a From Zero to Hero clean architecture in .NET bundle, which also has a permanent 20% discount. So if you want to buy both, that's the best value you're going to find. Now to celebrate the launch, I'd like to offer the first 500 of you a 20% discount on this brand new course. So check the link in the description and use code CLEAN20 at checkout. This is by far the best clean architecture course you're going to find out there. Everything updated to latest.net with latest practices by someone who's actually practicing what he's teaching in one of the biggest companies in the world. So don't miss this opportunity. Now back to the video. Okay, so the first one, Regex, is actually pretty simple. All you need to say is builder.services.addRouting core and then say configure you want to configure the route options and then in here you want to say x dot set parameter policy and you can use the regex inline route constraint then you just give it a name regex and that is it now you will be able to use any regex in your routing so you still have access to those things that don't take them away it just means they're not within the create builder method to add https support all you want to say is builder dot web host and then call the use Kestrel HTTPS configuration, and that'll do the trick. If you want to add redirects, you can also add them by saying HTTPS redirection over here that adds the middleware. And if you want to have HTTP3 support, all you want to say is builder.webhost and then use quick, and that will do the trick. This will add HTTP3 support. Now, if you want to customize it even further, just use the customization method. So that is all cool and nice, but let me just remove all of those nice things and show you the second way of creating web obligation. And that is the create empty builder. You don't even get to pass the arguments. That's no longer acceptable. You have to pass options and through options of course you can pass arguments if you want so you can do something like this but there is no other overload on create builder not even an empty one you have to do everything manually there is sort of nothing added in there what do i mean by nothing well this application looks like a fine working application right let me go ahead and just run this well as you're going to see very quickly the application will just crash it won't even run and that's because there is not even a server by default nothing in here can run this it's a completely empty web application and you have to manually add everything so it's the most stripped back version and you have to handle everything by hand what do i mean by everything well for example if i want to use kestrel i'm gonna say builder.webhost.use kestrel and if i do that and i go ahead and i run my application now i will have a server as you're going to see but now i'm getting an other error saying i need to handle routing manually and that's because i still have this map get endpoint which is not supported in its current form now i can actually use Kestrel core to have the lower level version of Kestrel registered without some of the unnecessary optional services. So I can still do that. And if I do that, by the way, the application now will run because there is no endpoint to mess up the routing. However, as you can see, there is not even a logger in the console. Nothing is logged, nothing is loaded. I have to add all of those things manually. Now I can still use the app.use methods to have an async endpoint if I want to, meaning I can have the context and then the next middleware and I can write everything in a very straight back way. An example would be to say await context response and then write the response async and say world well, just like before and then await to the next middleware in the pipeline here we go so any request will allow me to write this i'm not really filtering for any requests so if i go here and i say send as you're going to see i still get world but that's going to be the case on any request it's not really handling just hello now what if i wanted to add that previous routing back in here well all i need to say is builder.services.add routing core and if i do that, i'm gonna comment this middleware out and then put that back in and now as you're going to see, this will work fine. Again, no logging at all here, but now I can go ahead and fire that request. And if I say hello, I'm getting world back. So it's truly a stripped down version, which allows you to have full control. And that is great again, especially for native AOT applications, because you're gonna get the smallest version possible 
and you only opt into the things you really, really need. That's the whole point of why these are here, because that will lead to a smaller executable, which in native AOT, that's what you want. And especially with streaming, you're going to get a very nice low call start. Now, I should point out as well that Create Slim Builder also removes a lot of functionality that would be incompatible if you used Create Builder. So there's also that. But the biggest thing ultimately for both of those builders is that they register less things by default, mainly so they can work with native AOT. Now, I haven't tested the performance of the three different approaches. And if you want me to do that, leave a comment down below and I'm more than happy to investigate if one is faster than the other, especially with less services and less middleware, which means less memory, which potentially means better performance. So leave a comment down below and let me know and I'll do that. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching and as always, keep coding.